The sound of Anne's heels clicking against the hardwood floor sent a shiver down my spine. I took a deep breath, plastered on a smile, and turned to face my mother-in-law as she strode into our living room like she owned the place. Lara, darling, Anne cooed, air kissing my cheeks. The apartment looks quaint. I suppose you've done the best you can with what you have. I bit my tongue, reminding myself that this was a gift from my parents. Thank you, Anne. We're quite happy here. Ethan emerged from the bedroom, our three-year-old son Riley perched on his hip. Mom, you're early. We weren't expecting you for another hour. Anne waved a dismissive hand. Oh, you know me. I couldn't wait to see my boys. She reached for Riley, who buried his face in Ethan's shoulder. Come on, champ, Ethan said, prying Riley loose. Say hello to Grandma. I watched as Anne smothered Riley with kisses, leaving lipstick marks on his chubby cheeks. The poor kid looked like he wanted to crawl out of his skin. So, Anne said, setting Riley down and turning her attention back to me. When are you two planning on giving me another grandchild? This place is certainly big enough for another little one. I forced a laugh. Oh, Anne, we're not quite ready for that yet. Riley keeps us plenty busy. Anne's eyes narrowed. Nonsense. You're not getting any younger, dear. And Ethan always wanted a big family, didn't you, sweetheart? Ethan shifted uncomfortably. Mom, we've talked about this. Lara and I will decide when we're ready for more kids. I'm just saying, Anne persisted. You don't want to wait too long. You know what they say about geriatric pregnancies. I felt my cheeks flush with anger and embarrassment. Before I could respond, Riley tugged on my pant leg. Mama hungry. Grateful for the distraction, I scooped him up. Let's get you a snack, buddy. Ethan, why don't you show your mother around? As I escaped to the kitchen, I heard Anne's voice trailing behind me. Really, Ethan, you should consider moving to a house in our neighborhood. It would be so much better for the children. I gripped the counter, trying to steady my nerves. This was supposed to be a quick visit, but I had a sinking feeling it was just the beginning. Everything okay? Ethan asked, appearing in the doorway. I forced a smile. Fine. Just getting Riley his snack. Ethan lowered his voice. Look, I know my mom can be a bit much, but she means well. Can you just try to get along? For me? I nodded, not trusting myself to speak. Ethan gave me a quick peck on the cheek before returning to the living room. As I cut up an apple for Riley, I could hear Anne's voice growing louder. Really, Ethan, I don't know why you insist on staying in this shoebox. Your father and I have plenty of room at our place. You could save so much money living with us. I froze, the knife hovering over the cutting board. This was new. Anne had never outright suggested we move in with them before. Mom, Ethan said, his voice strained. We're happy here, end of discussion. I peeked around the corner to see Anne's face twist into a pout. I'm only thinking of what's best for my family, is that so wrong? The tension in the room was palpable. I cleared my throat, desperate to change the subject. Who's ready for that tour? As we moved from room to room, Anne's criticisms flowed freely. The paint colors were too dark, the furniture too modern, the artwork not nearly sophisticated enough. With each comment, I felt my resolve weakening. By the time Anne finally left, promising to return soon for a longer visit, I was exhausted. I collapsed onto the couch, Riley curling up beside me. Ethan sighed, running a hand through his hair. That wasn't so bad, was it? I stared at him incredulously. Are you serious? She practically invited herself to move in with us. She's just lonely since Dad's been sick, Ethan said defensively. We should make more of an effort to include her. As Ethan's words sank in, a chill ran down my spine. Something told me this was just the beginning of a much bigger problem. The shrill ring of my phone jolted me awake. I fumbled for it in the dark, my heart racing as I saw Anne's name on the screen. Lara? It's Brian. He's... he's in the hospital. I sat up, instantly alert. What happened? A stroke, Anne's voice cracked. They don't know. I need you and Ethan here. Now. Within the hour, we were at the hospital. Riley left with a neighbor. The harsh fluorescent lights made Anne look older, more vulnerable than I'd ever seen her. Oh, thank God you're here, she said, pulling Ethan into a tight embrace. I stood awkwardly to the side, unsure of my place in this family crisis. As we waited for news, Anne's composure crumbled. I don't know what I'll do if— She trailed off, her eyes filling with tears. Despite our differences, I found myself reaching out to squeeze her hand. He's strong. Anne, 
He'll pull through. The doctor finally emerged, his face grave. Mr. Thompson is stable, but he's suffered significant damage. He'll need round-the-clock care for the foreseeable future. Anne's grip on my hand tightened. Of course, we'll hire the best nurses, whatever it takes. The doctor shook his head. I'm afraid it's not that simple. Mr. Thompson will need a level of care that's difficult to provide at home. I'd recommend a long-term care facility. Absolutely not, Anne interrupted. My husband is coming home with me, and that's final. As the doctor tried to reason with her, I saw the wheels turning in Anne's mind. I knew what was coming before she even opened her mouth. Lara, dear, she said, turning to me with a sickeningly sweet smile. You're not working right now, are you? Surely you could help me care for Brian. It would mean so much to have family around during this difficult time. I felt Ethan stiffen beside me. Mom, we can't just uproot our lives. Can't we? Anne's voice took on a sharp edge. After everything your father and I have done for you, that apartment you're living in rent-free, the least you could do is help when we need you most. I watched the conflict play out on Ethan's face. I knew he felt indebted to his parents, but this was asking too much. We'll figure something out, I said, trying to diffuse the tension. But moving in isn't. I think it's a great idea, Ethan interrupted. I stared at him in disbelief. What? Think about it, Lara. We'd be saving money. Riley would get to spend more time with his grandparents. It makes sense. I felt like I was drowning, my carefully constructed life crumbling around me. Ethan, can we talk about this in private? We stepped into the hallway, leaving Anne to fuss over Brian's unconscious form. Have you lost your mind? I hissed. We can't move in with your parents. Ethan ran a hand through his hair, a sure sign he was stressed. It's temporary, Lara, just until Dad's back on his feet. And how long will that be? Months? Years? What about our life, our home? This is family, Ethan said, his voice hardening. Sometimes we have to make sacrifices. I felt a surge of anger. Easy for you to say. You're not the one who will be playing nurse and housekeeper to your mother all day. Is that really all you care about? Your comfort? S Ethan's eyes flashed with disappointment. I thought you were better than that, Lara. His words stung. But before I could respond, Anne appeared in the doorway. Is everything all right? she asked, her eyes darting between us. Ethan straightened his shoulders. Everything's fine, Mom. We'd be happy to move in and help out. Anne's face lit up with triumph. Oh, I knew I could count on you both. We'll get started on the arrangements right away. As Anne launched into plans for our move, I caught a glimpse of my reflection in the window. I barely recognized the woman staring back at me. Trapped, powerless, and utterly alone. I stared at the boxes piled high in Anne and Brian's guest room, our entire life condensed into cardboard containers. The weight of our decision pressed down on me, making it hard to breathe. Lara, where did you put Riley's favorite blanket? Ethan called from downstairs. I sighed, digging through a nearby box. Coming. As I descended the stairs, I caught sight of Anne hovering over Brian in his hospital bed, now set up in the living room. Her saccharine voice grated on my nerves. Oh, Brian, darling, isn't it wonderful having the whole family under one roof? I bit my tongue, handing the blanket to Ethan without a word. He barely glanced at me, too preoccupied with setting up Riley's play area. Lara, Anne chirped, be a dear and fetch Brian's medication, would you? It's time for his next dose. I nodded, retreating to the kitchen. As I sorted through the pill bottles, I heard the doorbell ring. I'll get it, I called, grateful for any excuse to escape. I opened the door to find a woman about my age, holding a casserole dish. Hi there. I'm Jenna, your next-door neighbor. I thought I'd bring over a welcome dish. Relief washed over me at the sight of a friendly face. That's so kind of you. I'm Lara. Would you like to come in for a cup of coffee? Before Jenna could respond, Anne appeared behind me. Who's this, Lara? I introduced Jenna, watching Anne's eyes narrow as she sized up our new neighbor. How lovely, Anne said, her tone anything but... I'm sure Lara would love to chat, but we're quite busy settling in. Perhaps another time? I felt my cheeks burn with embarrassment. Actually, I— Lara, Ethan interrupted. Mom needs help with Dad's physical therapy. Can you come here? Jenna gave me a sympathetic smile. No worries. We'll catch up soon, okay? As I closed the door, I felt the last of my freedom slipping away. The days blurred together, a monotonous cycle of caring for Brian, catering to Anne's demands— and trying to keep Riley entertained.
Ethan grew more distant, spending long hours at work and barely acknowledging me when he was home. One afternoon, while Anne was napping and Brian was stable, I snuck out to the backyard. I needed air, space, anything to clear my head. Sst! Lara! I turned to see Jenna, waving from over the fence. Hey, neighbor. Fancy meeting you here in your own yard, she teased. I managed a weak smile. It feels like the first time I've seen daylight in weeks. Jenna's expression softened. That bad, huh? Before I knew it, I was spilling everything. The move, the tension with Ethan, Anne's constant criticism. Jenna listened without judgment, offering tissues when the tears started falling. Lara, honey, you can't keep living like this, she said gently. Have you thought about leaving? I stared at her, shocked. I... I can't. Ethan needs me. Riley needs his father. Jenna shook her head. What about what you need? You're disappearing, Lara. I can see it happening right in front of me. Her words hit me like a punch to the gut. She was right. I was losing myself, piece by piece. Lara, Anne's shrill voice cut through the air. Where are you? Brian needs his bath. I closed my eyes, stealing myself. I should go. Jenna reached across the fence, squeezing my hand. Think about what I said, okay? You deserve better than this. As I turned to go back inside, I caught sight of Ethan watching from an upstairs window. The look of disappointment on his face made my stomach churn. That night, as we lay in bed, Ethan finally spoke. I saw you talking to the neighbor today. Her name is Jenna, I said, my voice barely above a whisper. Mom says she's been filling your head with nonsense, telling you to leave us. I sat up, anger flaring. So you're spying on me now? Ethan's face hardened. Someone has to keep an eye on you. You've been neglecting your duties, Lara. Mom's had to pick up your slack. My duties? I spat. I'm your wife, Ethan, not your servant. Keep your voice down, he hissed. You'll wake Riley. I stared at him, this stranger wearing my husband's face. In that moment, I made a decision that would change everything. I want a divorce. The words hung in the air between us, heavy and irreversible. Ethan's face contorted in shock, then anger. A divorce? Are you out of your mind, Lara? I stood my ground, heart pounding. I'm serious, Ethan. I can't live like this anymore. He scoffed, running a hand through his hair. This is ridiculous. You're just tired. Get some sleep, and we'll talk in the morning. But I knew there was no going back. I grabbed a pillow and headed for the door. I'll sleep in Riley's room tonight. As I settled onto the small couch in Riley's room, my mind raced. How would I manage on my own? Where would we go? The questions swirled until exhaustion finally pulled me under. The next morning, I woke to Riley's gentle pats on my cheek. Mama, why are you sleeping here? I forced a smile. Just wanted to be close to you, sweetie. Let's get you dressed. As we made our way downstairs, the tension in the house was palpable. Anne's eyes narrowed as she saw me. Ethan told me about your outburst last night, she said, her voice dripping with disdain. I hope you've come to your senses. I ignored her, focusing on getting Riley his breakfast. Ethan appeared, looking haggard. Lara, can we talk? He asked, gesturing to the patio. Once outside, he sighed heavily. Look, I know things have been tough, but divorce? That's not the answer. I steeled myself. It is for me, Ethan. I'm not happy. I haven't been for a long time. And what about Riley? Have you thought about what this would do to him? The guilt hit me like a wave, but I pushed through. Of course I have. But staying in an unhappy marriage isn't good for him either. Ethan's face hardened. If you do this, you'll regret it. My parents have connections. They'll make sure you never see Riley again. The threat sent a chill down my spine. Before I could respond, Anne's voice called from inside. Ethan, the movers are here. Confused, I followed Ethan back into the house. Two burly men stood in the entryway, clipboards in hand. What's going on? I asked, a knot forming in my stomach. Anne smiled sweetly. Oh, didn't Ethan tell you? We've decided to sell your apartment. It's time for a fresh start, altogether. The room spun. You, you can't do that. My parents gave us that apartment. As a wedding gift, Ethan interjected, and since you're so keen on ending our marriage, I'd say it's fair game. I felt the walls closing in. Our apartment, my safe haven, was being ripped away, and with it any chance of independence. You planned this, I whispered, the realization dawning. You knew I was unhappy, so you trapped me here. Anne's smile turned predatory. Now, Lara, don't be dramatic. We're family. This is what's best for everyone. I watched helplessly as the movers began packing up our life. 
Riley tugged at my sleeve, confusion in his eyes. Mama, where are our things going? I knelt down, fighting back tears. They're... They're coming here, sweetie. We're going to stay with Grandma and Grandpa for a while. As I held Riley close, I caught sight of Jenna through the window. She waved, concern etched on her face. I managed a weak smile, but inside I was screaming. Later that night, as the house finally quieted, I slipped out to the backyard. Jenna was there, waiting. Lara, what's going on? I saw the movers earlier. The dam broke, and I told her everything. The forced move, Ethan's threats, the loss of our apartment. Jenna listened, her expression growing more horrified. Lara, this is abuse. You need to get out of there. How? I choked out. They've taken everything. I have nowhere to go, no money of my own. Jenna reached across the fence, gripping my hand tightly. Listen to me. I have a friend who's a lawyer. She specializes in cases like yours. Let me call her. As I nodded, a light flicked on upstairs. Ethan's silhouette appeared in the window, watching us. I have to go, I whispered urgently. Jenna squeezed my hand one last time. Be ready. We're getting you out of there. As I crept back inside, my heart raced with equal parts fear and hope. For the first time in months, I felt a flicker of control returning. Whatever came next, I knew one thing for certain. I wouldn't go down without a fight. The next morning, I woke with a newfound determination. Jenna's words echoed in my mind, giving me strength. I had to act and fast. As I made breakfast, Anne hovered nearby, her eyes following my every move. I hope you've reconsidered your foolish notion of divorce, Lara. It would be such a shame to tear this family apart. I bit my tongue, focusing on Riley's cereal. Ethan walked in, his face a mask of indifference. Morning, he mumbled, barely glancing at me. I took a deep breath. Ethan, we need to talk, privately. Anne's eyes narrowed, but she retreated to Brian's room. Ethan sighed, following me to the patio. What is it now, Lara? I steeled myself. I'm leaving. Today. And I'm taking Riley with me. Ethan's face contorted with anger. Like hell you are. You have nowhere to go, no money. You're nothing without us. His words stung, but I stood my ground. I've contacted a lawyer. She's helping me file for divorce and emergency custody. Ethan's laugh was cold. Good luck with that. My parents' lawyers will bury you. I have evidence, Ethan, I said, my voice shaking of the emotional abuse, the manipulation, the way you and your mother have isolated me. His face paled. You're bluffing. I pulled out my phone, playing a recording of last night's conversation. Ethan's threats echoed in the quiet morning air. You bitch, he hissed. You'll regret this. Before I could respond, a scream pierced the air. We rushed inside to find Anne standing over Brian's bed, her face ashen. He's not breathing, she wailed. The next few hours passed in a blur. Paramedics arrived, but it was too late. Brian was gone. As the coroner took Brian's body away, I retreated to Riley's room, holding him close. The weight of what I had to do pressed down on me. A soft knock at the door startled me. It was Anne, her eyes red-rimmed. Lara, she said, her voice hoarse. I, I need you. We all do. Please, let's put this nonsense behind us, for Brian's sake. For a moment I wavered. The grief in her eyes was real, and part of me ached to comfort her. But then I remembered the months of manipulation, the constant belittling, the way she and Ethan had conspired to trap me here. I'm sorry for your loss, Anne, I said softly, but I can't stay. It's not healthy for me or for Riley. Anne's face hardened. You ungrateful little. Everything okay in here? Ethan appeared in the doorway, his eyes darting between us. I nodded, gathering Riley in my arms. We're fine. I was just telling your mother that Riley and I will be staying at a hotel tonight. We need some space. Ethan's jaw clenched. Now isn't the time for this, Lara. We need to plan the funeral, deal with Dad's estate. And we will, I interrupted. But not here. Not like this. As I moved to leave, Ethan grabbed my arm. You're not taking my son anywhere. Riley whimpered, burying his face in my neck. The sound seemed to snap Ethan out of his rage. Fine, he spat. Go. But this isn't over. I hurried downstairs, my heart pounding. As I reached for the door, Anne's voice stopped me cold. If you walk out that door, don't bother coming back. You'll never see a penny of Brian's money, and I'll make sure everyone knows what an abandoning whore you are. I turned to face her, surprised by the calm that washed over me. Goodbye, Anne. As I stepped outside, Jenna was waiting in her car, engine running. You ready? She called. I nodded, buckling Riley into the back seat. 
As we pulled away, I caught a glimpse of Ethan and Anne in the rearview mirror, their faces a mix of fury and disbelief. Where to? Jenna asked. I took a deep breath, feeling the weight of the past few years lifting. Anywhere but here. As we drove away from the house that had become my prison, I felt a glimmer of hope. The road ahead was uncertain, but for the first time in years, I was free to choose my own path. The hotel room felt like a sanctuary after the chaos of the past few days. Riley slept peacefully in the adjoining room while I pored over documents with Sarah, Jenna's lawyer friend. These recordings are damning, Lara, Sarah said, her brow furrowed. But Ethan's family has deep pockets. They'll fight dirty. I nodded, steeling myself. I'm ready. What's our next move? A sharp knock at the door made us both jump. I approached cautiously, peering through the peephole. My heart raced as I saw Ethan standing there, his face a mask of barely contained rage. Lara, open the damn door. Sarah squeezed my arm. Don't. I'll call security. But as she reached for her phone, another voice joined Ethan's, Anne's. Lara, darling, please. We just want to talk. Against my better judgment, I cracked the door open, the security chain still in place. What do you want? Ethan's eyes were bloodshot, his hair disheveled. You can't do this. You can't take my son away. Our son, I corrected, my voice stronger than I felt. And I'm not taking him away. I'm protecting him. Anne pushed forward, her face a picture of concern. Sweetheart, we're worried about you. This isn't like you, running away, hiring lawyers. Come home, we can work this out as a family. For a moment, I almost wavered. The familiar pull of their manipulation tugged at me. But then I remembered the months of gaslighting, the isolation, the constant belittling. No, I said, said firmly. We're done. The divorce papers have been filed. You'll be hearing from my lawyer. Ethan's face contorted with fury. You think you can win? My family will destroy you. You'll never see Riley again. As he lunged forward, the security chain snapped taut. Sarah appeared behind me, her phone in hand. Step back, or I'm calling the police, she warned. Anne's saccharine smile faltered. Now, there's no need for that. We're all adults here. I took a deep breath, steadying myself. I have something to say, and then I want you both to leave. They fell silent, watching me warily. I know about the affair, Anne. The color drained from Anne's face. Ethan turned to his mother, confusion etched in his features. What is she talking about? I pressed on, my heart pounding. I have proof. Emails, hotel receipts, photos, all while Brian was sick. While you were guilting me into caring for him, you were off with your lover. Anne's composure cracked. You little bitch, you've been snooping through my things? Ethan stumbled back, his world visibly crumbling. Mom? Is this true? I closed the door, muffling their voices. Sarah stared at me, wide-eyed. That wasn't in our strategy, she whispered. I know, I replied, my hands shaking, but I couldn't hold it in anymore. As Sarah called hotel security, I sank onto the bed, the adrenaline leaving me in a rush. What had I done? Hours later, after Ethan and Anne had been escorted from the premises, my phone buzzed with a text from an unknown number. This isn't over. You've ruined everything. I hope you're ready for war. I showed the message to Sarah, who immediately began typing on her laptop. We'll file for a restraining order first thing in the morning, she said. But Lara, you need to be prepared. This is going to get ugly. As if on cue, my phone lit up with notifications. Social media posts, texts from mutual friends, all asking about the rumors spreading online. Anne had wasted no time in launching her smear campaign. I curled up next to Riley, watching his peaceful face as he slept. The enormity of what lay ahead crashed over me. I had thrown the first punch, exposed Anne's deepest secret. But at what cost? As the night wore on, I wrestled with doubt and fear. Had I made the right choice? Could I really win against Ethan's family and their resources? But as the first light of dawn crept through the curtains, I felt a resolve solidify within me. I had come too far to back down now. For Riley's sake, for my own, I had to see this through. Whatever came next, I would face it head on. The war had begun, and I was ready to fight. The courthouse loomed before me, its imposing facade a stark reminder of the battle ahead. I clutched Riley's hand tightly as we climbed the steps, Sarah and Jenna flanking us protectively. Remember, Sarah whispered, stay calm, no matter what they throw at you. I nodded, my throat too tight for words. As we entered the courtroom, I saw Ethan and Anne already seated their expensive lawyer leaning in close, whispering strategy. The judge called the court to order, 
and the air crackled with tension. Ethan's lawyer stood, his voice dripping with false concern. Your Honor, we have grave concerns about the welfare of young Riley. Mrs. Thompson has shown erratic behavior, making unfounded accusations and fleeing the family home. I bit my tongue, resisting the urge to shout out. Sarah squeezed my hand reassuringly before rising to speak. Your Honor, my client has extensive documentation of emotional abuse and manipulation at the hands of Mr. Thompson and his mother. We also have evidence of Mrs. Ann Thompson's infidelity during her husband's illness. A gasp rippled through the courtroom. Anne's face turned ashen, while Ethan's jaw clenched visibly. The judge frowned. These are serious allegations. I'd like to see this evidence immediately. As Sarah presented our case, I watched Ethan and Anne whisper furiously to their lawyer. The pit in my stomach grew with each passing moment. Suddenly, Ethan stood up. Your Honor, I'd like to speak. The judge nodded and Ethan turned to face me, his eyes blazing with a mixture of anger and something else. Desperation? Lara, he said, his voice cracking. I know I've made mistakes, we both have, but Riley needs both of us. Please, can't we work this out? For a moment I wavered. The familiar pull of our shared history tugged at my heart. But then I remembered the months of gaslighting, the isolation, the constant belittling. No, Ethan, I said firmly, it's too late for that. Anne leapt to her feet. You ungrateful little witch, after everything we've done for you. Mrs. Thompson, the judge barked. Control yourself or I'll have you removed from this courtroom. As Anne sank back into her seat, her face contorted with rage, I felt a surge of strength. I stood addressing the judge directly. Your Honor, I've spent years trying to please this family, sacrificing my own happiness and well-being in the process. I'm not asking for money or revenge. I just want to raise my son in a healthy, loving environment. The judge nodded thoughtfully. I've seen enough for today. We'll reconvene tomorrow for my decision. As we filed out of the courtroom, I felt a mix of relief and dread. What if the judge sided with Ethan? What if I lost Riley? Outside, reporters swarmed us, shouting questions about Anne's affair and the family's dirty laundry. Jenna and Sarah formed a protective barrier around Riley and me as we pushed through the crowd. Suddenly, I heard Ethan's voice behind me. Lara, wait! I turned to see him jogging towards us, his face a mask of anguish. Please, can we talk? Just for a minute? Against my better judgment, I nodded. Jenna, can you take Riley to the car? As soon as Riley was out of earshot, Ethan's demeanor changed. His eyes hardened, his voice low and menacing. You think you've won? This is far from over. My mother has friends in high places. We'll make sure you never see Riley again. I felt the blood drain from my face. You wouldn't dare. Try me, he snarled. You've ruined everything. Now I'm going to ruin you. Hef As he stormed off, I stood rooted to the spot, my world spinning. Sarah appeared at my side, her face etched with concern. Lara? What happened? What did he say? I opened my mouth to respond, but no words came out. The weight of Ethan's threat crashed over me, leaving me gasping for air. As we drove away from the courthouse, Riley chattering happily in the back seat, I stared out the window, my mind racing. How far would Ethan and Anne go to keep Riley? What lengths would I have to go to protect him? The war I had started was far from over. And as the sun set on this tumultuous day, I realized that the real battle was just beginning. The courtroom fell silent as the judge cleared his throat. My heart pounded so loudly, I was sure everyone could hear it. Riley sat beside me, blissfully unaware of the gravity of this moment. In the matter of Thompson v. Thompson, the judge began, I've carefully considered all evidence presented. The accusations of emotional abuse, manipulation, and infidelity are deeply troubling. I held my breath, feeling Jenna's reassuring hand on my shoulder. It is the decision of this court to grant full custody of Riley Thompson to Lara Thompson with supervised visitation rights for Ethan Thompson. The room erupted in chaos. I sat stunned, tears of relief streaming down my face. Ethan leapt to his feet, shouting obscenities, while Anne wailed dramatically. Order! The judge bellowed. Mr. Thompson, control yourself or you'll be held in contempt. As the bailiff escorted Ethan and Anne out, I hugged Riley close, whispering, It's over, baby. We're going to be okay. Outside the courthouse, reporters swarmed us. I steeled myself, ready to face them head on. Mrs. Thompson, how do you respond to accusations that you fabricated evidence against your mother-in-law? I took a deep breath. 
Every piece of evidence presented was thoroughly vetted by my legal team. The truth has prevailed today, and that's all that matters. As we pushed through the crowd, I caught sight of Anne being helped into a car, her face ashen. Our eyes met for a brief moment, and I saw something I'd never seen before in her gaze. Defeat. Months passed, and life settled into a new rhythm. Riley thrived in our new apartment, away from the toxic environment of his grandparents' home. I found a job I loved, rediscovering parts of myself I thought I'd lost. One crisp autumn day, as Riley and I walked hand in hand through the park, I spotted a familiar figure on a bench. It was Anne, looking years older than when I'd last seen her. Lara, she called out weakly. Please, can we talk? Every instinct told me to keep walking, but something in her voice made me pause. Five minutes, I said, sitting Riley down with his toys nearby. Anne's hands trembled as she spoke. I've lost everything. Ethan barely speaks to me. The country club. Well, let's just say my social circle has shrunk considerably. I remained silent, waiting. I know it's too late, she continued, but I want you to know I'm sorry, for everything, the way I treated you, the lies, the manipulation. I was so afraid of losing control that I ended up losing everything that mattered. I studied her face, searching for any sign of deceit. Finding none, I nodded slowly. Thank you for saying that, Anne. It doesn't change the past, but it means something. As I stood to leave, Anne reached out, her eyes pleading. Do you think, someday, I might be able to see Riley again? I took a deep breath, weighing my words carefully. That's not my decision to make anymore. When Riley's older, if he wants to know you, I won't stand in the way. But for now, we need space to heal. Walking away, I felt a weight lift from my shoulders. The last threads of resentment and anger loosened their grip on my heart. That night, as I tucked Riley into bed, he asked, Mommy, are you happy? I smiled, realizing the truth of my answer. Yes, sweetheart, I really am. Later, curled up on the couch with a cup of tea, I reflected on the journey that had brought me here. The pain, the struggles, the moments of doubt, they had all shaped me into the woman I was now. Strong, resilient, free. My phone buzzed with a text from Jenna, Drinks tomorrow to celebrate your promotion? I grinned, typing back a quick, Absolutely. As I gazed out the window at the city lights, I felt a sense of peace wash over me. The future stretched out before me, full of possibilities. For the first time in years, I was excited to see what it held. I had faced my demons, stood up to my oppressors, and come out stronger on the other side. The woman who had once felt trapped and powerless was gone. In her place stood someone new, someone who knew her worth, and wasn't afraid to fight for it. Tomorrow would bring new challenges, new joys, new adventures. But tonight, in this moment, I was exactly where I needed to be. Home. Safe. Free. And as I drifted off to sleep, one thought echoed in my mind. The best revenge isn't destruction or retribution. It's living well, on your own terms. And that's exactly what I intended to do.